Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and more. Today we have pre-cancerous lesions and contusions. So this session is about erythroplakia and carcinoma in situ. They are pre-malignant lesions. So pre-malignant lesions, uh, they are nothing but morphologically altered tissue in which cancer is more likely to occur than its apparently normal counterpart. So another thing is precancerous condition. It is a generalized state of the body which is associated with significantly increased risk of cancer. Okay, so precancerous um, or pre-malignant lesions are leukoplakia, erythroplakia, carcinoma in situ discaratosis, follicularis, Bowen's disease, whereas pre-malignant conditions are the most common OSMF or lichen planus, uh, syphilitic glossitis, sideropenic dysphagia, discaratosis congenita. So this is about pre-malignant or pre-cancerous lesions. They are leukoplakia, erythroplakia, carcinoma in situ. So today's session is about erythroplakia and carcinoma in situ. Leukoplakia uh, we have already covered in this channel. So you can uh, watch the video which was uploaded previously. Similarly, pre-malignant conditions like uh, oral submucous fibrosis or lichen planus. So all those things are already been uploaded. Now let's learn about erythroplakia and carcinoma in situ. Erythroplakia by definition is any lesion of the oral mucosa that presents as a bright red velvety patch or plaque which cannot be characterized clinically or pathologically as any other recognizable condition. And the classification as homogeneous erythroplakia, erythroplakia interspersed with patches of leukoplakia and granular or speckled erythroplakia homogeneous one with interspersed with leukoplakia and granular or speckled erythroplakia so the most common etiology is just as leukoplakia and it is mainly affecting the middle aged people and the peak incidence is 65 to 74 years gender predilection is on men and the location and size so location basically it's seen on soft palate floor of the mouth buccal mucosa and tongue whereas the size the typical lesion most commonly less than 1.5 centimeter but sometimes it may reach up to greater than 4 centimeters so it appears as a smooth and granular or nodular lesion which is well defined may be an irregular or red granular surface which is interspersed with white or yellow foci and it will be soft on palpation and which has highest risk of malignant transformation that is around 14 to 50 percentage of malignant transformation for erythroplakia and based on the fact that on histology these 80 to 90 percentage of the cases present as carcinoma in situ, severe epithelial dysplasia, and microinvasive carcinoma. Microinvasive carcinoma. So, most of the cases will be histologically. Uh, as carcinoma in situ, severe epithelial dysplasia or microinvasive carcinoma. So on management side, we have to first think of biopsy, then treatment guided by the histopathological diagnosis. Recurrence is a common thing. So we need to have a careful, long follow-up. Because since the recurrence is high, we need to have a careful 
longer follow up so that is all about erythroplakia which is having highest malignant transformation it's almost like leukoplakia but little different in classification now let's move on to carcinoma in situ carcinoma in situ is intra epithelial carcinoma intra epithelial carcinoma it's a very peculiar type right because carcinoma we have metastasis which is spreading to various tissues but this is intra epithelial carcinoma which is confined within the boundaries which arises frequently on the skin but also on mucous membranes including oral cavity which is most severe stage of epithelial dysplasia the most striking feature is the dysplastic epithelial cells do not invade into the connective tissue that is the most striking feature do not invade to connective tissue so the common among elderly with a male predilection which present as a white plaque or ulcerated or reddened areas the most common site is floor of the mouth floor of the mouth tongue and lips these are the most common sites and has a combined features of leukoplakia and erythroplakia okay leukoplakia and erythroplakia these features are combined in histopathology there will be keratin may or may not be present but if present it is usually para keratin and individual cell keratinization or keratin pearl formations are rare the consistent finding there will be loss of orientation and normal polarity of cells so orientation and normal polarity will be lost and regarding the treatment there is no accepted treatment we could go for surgical excision uh, radiation therapy or cauterization so that is about carcinoma in situ and erythroplakia so these are pre malignant lesions leukoplakia carcinoma in situ erythroplakia so the questions usually come as explain about or classify pre malignant lesions and pre malignant conditions and explain about or like in planus osm of erythroplakia or leukoplakia okay you need to write the classification first then the most commonly asked is either leukoplakia or oral lichen planus or osmf these are most commonly asked question erythroplakia carcinoma in situ could be a short not so the basic difference is one is lesion and one is condition so the oral lichen planus osmf are condition whereas the leukoplakia erythroplakia are the lesions okay so that's all about pre malignant lesions and conditions particularly erythroplakia and carcinoma in situ so i'll come up with a new topic in dentistry and more thank you